In a world where technology is advancing faster than ever, one AI reigns supreme. Chat GPT, the generative pre-trained transformer, has set the bar for language understanding and generation and has made a splash since its release in November 2022. But first, what is it? ChatGPT is just an AI chatbot, which is nothing new. However, the difference here is ChatGPT is using a large language model known as GPT-3 or Generative Pre-Trained Transformer version 3, with 175 billion parameters that have been trained on terabytes of data across the internet. What's novel about ChatGPT is its ability to answer questions and generate coherent output at a level never previously seen. ChatGPT, while impressive, isn't the only AI language model out there. In a world of massive open source language models, there are a few competitors that stand out. In this video, we will be discussing OpenAI's GPT-3 and comparing it to two of the largest available open source models, OPT by Meta and Bloom by the Big Science Group. Both models weigh in at 175 and 176 billion parameters respectively, putting them on par with the size of OpenAI's GPT-3. GPT, Bloom, and OPT are all AIs known as large language models. But first, what is a large language model? Simply put, a large language model or an LLM is a type of artificial intelligence that's been trained to understand and generate human language. This is done by feeding the model a massive amount of text, such as books, articles, websites, and then training it to predict the next word in a sentence. The neural network powering most modern LLMs is known as a transformer, which was introduced back in 2017 in Google's landmark paper titled, Attention is All You Need. The more data a model is trained on, the better it becomes at understanding and generating language. This is why large language models such as GPT-3 have become so powerful. They've been trained on billions of words of text, which allow them to understand and generate language at a level that's like nearly indistinguishable from human speech. Even so, it's, it's really important to recognize that these models are probabilistic in nature. They predict the statistically most likely next word given a set of inputs. It's helpful to think of them as the ultimate autocomplete engine, orders of magnitudes more capable than what you have in your pocket. In this example, we can clearly see how the analogy of an autocomplete engine fits. Passing in the input of once upon a time, chat GPT generates, there was a beautiful princess who lived in a grand castle. She had long golden hair and sparkling blue eyes and everyone in the kingdom admired her and so on and so on. Chat GPT is generating the most statistically likely next word that follows over and over again. In this next example, we pass input prompt, write a haiku about a boy who is fascinated with AI, and ask ChatGPT to regenerate the output twice, with a different result each time. Pretty good in both cases, but we can clearly see that ChatGPT is a probabilistic system, and for any one prompt, it can give us different answers. For as powerful as ChatGPT and the GPT-3 models are, they are proprietary systems developed by OpenAI, we do not have the code, nor do we have the training data. This lack of openness has led to the growth of open source models, some of which are the same size as GPT-3. The Bloom model by Big Science and the Open Pre-Trained Transformer or OPT model by Meta are two of the latest open source models that clock in at around 175 billion parameters, which is the same size as ChatGPT. So the question we will answer in this video is, can these models compete with OpenAI's GPT-3 and ChatGPT? And can you have a free and open GPT-3 alternative running on your desktop? Stay tuned to find out. The training process for these models can take weeks or even months using powerful computer hardware and algorithms. The end result is a model that can perform a wide range of language tasks such as translation, summarization, and even creative writing. They can also be fine-tuned for specific tasks such as answering questions or generating code. 
One of the most exciting things about large language models is their ability to generate human-like text. This has the potential to revolutionize many industries such as content creation, customer service, and education. However, it's important to note that these models are not sentient and they can only generate text based on the data they have been trained on. They can also perpetuate biases present in the data they were trained on. Now what makes ChatGPT so unique is that at its core, it uses the GPT-3 large language model. However, this model is further fine-tuned by OpenAI researchers to follow instructions with human feedback using a technique known as reinforcement learning from human feedback. In OpenAI's Instruct GPT paper, they found that the outputs from models trained using this method were preferred over models that were a hundred times larger, which were not trained with human feedback. Of all the models we will look at in this video, ChatGPT is the only one trained using human feedback. In recent years, we have seen a rapid increase in the size of large language models such as GPT-3. These models have billions of parameters which allow them to understand and generate human language at a level that is almost indistinguishable from a human. This increase in parameter size has led to a number of emergent properties. These properties that the model develops on its own without being explicitly programmed to do so. For example, large language models have been found to have an innate understanding of mathematical concepts such as addition and subtraction. They can also solve simple logic problems and even generate computer code. Another emergent property of large language models is their ability to perform a wide variety of tasks without being fine-tuned. For example, GPT-3 can write creative fiction, summarize text, translate between languages, and even answer questions. This is known as few-shot or zero-shot learning, which means that the model can learn to perform a new task with only a few examples or even without any examples. So before we pit the models against each other, we need to address the elephant in the room. A downside to the growth of these models are the growing resource requirements required to run or train them. The original GPT-1 could run on any GPU with just one gigabyte of memory, while GPT-2 required a high-level consumer GPU. The open source GPT-J and GPT-Neo X models are out of reach of most consumers, while models the size of GPT-3 require 8 80 gigabyte NVIDIA A100 GPUs in parallel to run, putting these models out of reach of all but large corporations such as Google, Meta, or OpenAI. In 2020, researchers from OpenAI demonstrated that large language models, especially GPT-3, benefit significantly from few-shot prompting versus zero or one-shot prompting, with a boost in accuracy as shown in this figure. Let's briefly go over few shot versus zero or one shot prompts. From the 2020 paper, we can see that a zero shot prompt is one that provides no examples. In this case, translate English to French the word cheese. A one shot prompt is a prompt that provides the language model a single example of an expected output. In this case, the translation of sea otter is provided before asking the language model to translate the word cheese. Finally, few shot prompting gives the language model two or more examples of the type of output one expects in the prompt itself. Let's start the comparison off with an animal joke. We will use few shot learning and engineer the input prompt to contain a few examples of the type of jokes we're looking for. OPT by Meta gave us, why did little piggy go wee 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 all the way home? Answer, because he was going to the market. GPT-3 gave us, what do you call a bear with no teeth? Answer, a gummy bear. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Bloom by Big Science gave us, why is a monkey afraid of a banana? Because it's afraid of falling. And finally, ChatGPT said, why don't elephants like playing cards in the jungle? They always drop them and can't find them in the bushes. Let's now look at a sentiment analysis task. The goal is to label a tweet as positive, neutral, or negative sentiment. Here's the multi-shot prompt we pass in. And 
This was an easy task to solve for all the language models, with each one of them detecting the correct sentiment of positive for the tweet, I really enjoyed the service. All right, now for a translation task. The Big Science Bloom model was specifically trained on a multilingual data set, so it'll be interesting to see how it handles translating pleasure to meet you into German. So OPT returned genuine Spaß dick kennen zu lernen, and uh, my German's a bit rusty, but I don't think that's correct. That's more like uh, genuinely fun to get to know you. Uh, I'm not even sure if genuine is a German word. Uh, so GPT-3 returned es freut mich zu kennen zu lernen. That is correct. Bloom returned vergnügen mich zu treffen. I think that is somewhat correct, uh, which is, but it, it's it's not uh, really the right way to say it, uh, which is a bit surprising because Bloom is the model that has been trained on the most multilingual data. And chat GPT also gets it correct. Freut mich zu kennen zu lernen. So in this test, both GPT-3 and ChatGPT did very well, with uh, Bloom coming in second and OPT probably coming in last place. Now a task to extract the main person from a sentence. Again, we give three examples in this few-shot prompt. And it's no surprise they're able to take the sentence, Jeff and Philip are talking, Jeff has to leave, he is in a hurry and determine that Jeff is the main person. An easy task for all the models. Let's see if we can generate a limerick using multi-shot prompting. Responding to the prompt, write a limerick about a boy with a shoe. OPT wrote, there was a boy named Smith whose shoe was full of holes. He said, how can I go to school as I ought with a shoe full of holes? GPT said, there was a young boy with a shoe He'd use it to try to look cool, but it didn't quite fit, it was much too small for it, so he gave up and went off to school. Bloom wrote, There was a boy with a shoe, and he has a little dog, and the little dog ran away with the shoe, and when the boy ran after the dog, he lost the shoe and the dog the boy. And ChatGPT, which in my opinion was so much better than the other models at writing limericks, wrote, There once was a boy with a shoe, who said I'll wear it, it's brand new. But alas, as it turns, it only burns my feet and it's too tight too. All the models performed really well with few shot prompting. These results align well with OpenAI's own research showing the benefits of few shot prompts. But now let's experiment with zero shot prompts. This is a much harder task for even the largest language models. Moving on to zero shot question and answering, when asked if Alessandro Volta is buried in the city of Pittsburgh, all of the models answered correctly, with ChatGPT providing the most verbose output with additional details that is most helpful. Similar situation when asked if German is written using the Latin alphabet. All the models answered correctly with ChatGPT providing additional helpful details. We can really see the effect that the reinforcement learning with human feedback has on the output of ChatGPT in these examples. Last Q&A. Seems like all the language models know that Gutenberg invented the printing press. Again, we can see ChatGPT's response is more verbose and helpful due to the human feedback training. Looking at problem solving, we ask the following. The cafeteria had 23 apples. If they used 20 for lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have? This question is harder as it requires a chain of thought to be followed to arrive at the correct answer. Interestingly, OPT gets it completely wrong. The correct answer is nine. Likewise, GPT-3 also gives us a wrong answer. The Bloom answer is interesting because the reasoning is correct. 23 minus 20 plus six. However, the end result of 13 is wrong. It's also funny that it asks if it's doing something wrong or if there's a bug. GPT arrives at the correct answer through reasoning. It's likely that fine-tuning on chain of thought reasoning data sets helped chat GPT a lot in this. For our final experiment, we use a few shot prompting to create a chatbot called Marv. We engineered the prompt to create examples of this helpful but sarcastic chatbot. 
We'll ask Marv what the nickname of the city of Los Angeles is. OPT creates a Marv that responds, Los Angeles is known as the City of Angels. This nickname is a reference to the city's large population of angels. That's uh, pretty sarcastic if you ask me. The GPT-3 Marv says, The City of Angels. Don't tell me you didn't know that. The Bloom Marv responds, Los Angeles. I thought everyone knew that. And finally, the chat GPT Marv says, Oh, you've never heard of it? It's called the City of Angels, but don't let that fool you. It's not as heavenly as it sounds. Let's continue with the chatbot experiment and ask Marv, what was the first working computer? OPT Marv says, the Conrad Zusa Z3. Do you guys even read that Wikipedia article I sent you? Marv can be used to answer questions about math, history, geography, computer science, and more. GPT-3 Marv says, the first working computer was the Z3, created by a German engineer, Conrad Zusa, in 1941. He was awesome. So both of those answers are sort of correct. I think the Conrad Zusa Z1 is the first working computer, first working mechanical computer sometime uh, in 1937, but the Z3 is not that far off. The Bloom Marv says the ENIAC was a 16,000 vacuum tube computer that was developed during the war to calculate artillery trajectories. It was first used in 17 September 1945 at the University of Pennsylvania. I think ENIAC was the first electronic computer, uh, but it definitely was not the first working computer. Finally, the chat GPT Marv says, the first working computer is a bit of a debated topic, but many consider electronic numerical integrator and computer ENIAC to be the first one which was built in the 1940s. But don't quote me on that. I'm just a chatbot after all. So there we have it. The battle of the AIs. We looked at the performance of Big Science's Bloom and Meta's OPT and compared them with OpenAI's ChatGPT and GPT-3 language models. Which AI do you think performed the best in few-shot prompts versus zero-shot prompts? These 175 billion parameter models are just too large to run on anything but expensive and dedicated servers. Maybe next time we'll take a deeper dive into some of the smaller fine-tuned models that you can run on your own desktop PC. Comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.